Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Isaiah counsels us in today's first reading. We gather together to seek the Lord in word and sacrament, knowing that he can be found in scripture, in the Eucharist, and in each other. Welcome to St. Timothy Catholic Church in Walkersville, Maryland. Today we are celebrating the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Presiding at the Eucharist is our pastor, Father Juan Vasquez Rubio. Our Mass is being offered for Stephen Hassett, Al Jardine, Danny Duval, and the Jackson Longo family. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the everlasting source of forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal happiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the heart. Oh 
O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet I, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh Lord, to listen to the words 
Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said, he said to them, you too go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you two go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came and received the usual daily wage, so when the first came, they thought that they would receive more but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, this last ones work only an hour, and you have made them equal to us, who wore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or uh, am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's first reading from the prophet Isaiah offers a warning about putting God in a box. When it comes to God, Isaiah begins with a demand, seek the Lord while he may be found. This assumes that God is not at our beck and call. No matter how beautiful the temple or tabernacle, we can't imprison God in human constructs or institutions. Isaiah quotes God as saying, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. There is probably no sincere believer who would claim to understand God, but we should still ask ourselves how often we expect God to act on our agenda and obey our rules. The fact that God doesn't meet human expectations lies underneath many of the attempts to prove that a good God does not exist. Although it may be unconscious, the person who denies God's existence based on a particular set of circumstances is working from their own definition of God and their perception of how God should act. A more honest statement than God cannot exist would be, I can imagine how God could exist under these circumstances. To that, Isaiah will respond, you got it. God's thoughts are not your thoughts. In the gospel, the parable about the landowner who paid his workers equally for equal work is one of the most disconcerting 
if not downright infuriating, of Jesus' parables. People from vastly different cultures and historical eras tend to agree about these two stories. It's not fair. Isaiah told us that God says, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my thoughts above, above your thoughts. At least one thing that should teach us is that God doesn't see things from our perspective. Jesus used these parables to provide some hints about God's perspective. We all hope for justice. The question, from whose perspective do we understand it? The disgruntled workers who were fortunate enough to spend their whole day employed and certain that they and their families would eat that day ended up thinking that they deserved more than the others. It never occurred to them that they had already gotten it. Apparently, Jesus thought that justice had more to do with what someone needs to survive than with the luck of landing a good job. Today's vineyard is a globalized economy, which means that the demands of justice and responsibility for the common good now know no national, ethnic, or religious boundaries. And we see that as we go through this pandemic. Seeing things from the perspective of the vineyard owner, St. James Paul II said that in that world, economy, human need should outdo profits. Today's readings are an invitation for us to go looking for God's forgotten ones, to treat him not with a human standard of fairness, but with a holy abundance of love, compassion, and an earned generosity. This is quite a different perspective than one which, for whatever reason, asserts, I deserve more than those others. God's ways are not our ways. Think about it. Isaiah got it right. And now let us profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trust in our generous God to respond to our needs 
from early in our lives until the very end, we make our prayers now to the Lord. For the church, that we may strive always to conduct ourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who work in fields, on farms, and in vineyards, harvesting the food we eat, that they may be rewarded generously for their labor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our parish community may invite and welcome others at all times with the generosity modeled by the landowner in today's gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those most affected by the coronavirus, those without the resources or ability to overcome the effects of this pandemic and its socioeconomic repercussions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For political leaders at every level, that they may be compassionate to those who are most vulnerable, to those who have been overlooked or forgotten, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our Jewish friends and neighbors, whose celebration of Rosh Hashanah the new year ends Sunday, today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who cannot join us in celebrating the Eucharist, the hospitalized and the homebound, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our sister parish, St. Jerome in Haiti, that they may receive the spiritual and material blessings they need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, and for all the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Generous God, you lavish us with your infinite love as we gather in your name. Listen to our needs and grant them through Christ, thou Lord. Amen. Amen. that these our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the may Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ, thou Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. just. It is only right and just a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you a thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you lay the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You for man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for their forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember the church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and William our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In confidence, let us call upon our God as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, yours now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Offer each other a sign of peace.
This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ, thou Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Strange.